Hi everyone, uh, this is about breast cancer phase 2. The first time we met with discussed about breast cancer, the way it is very common and all the possible risk factors that we know of. Today I'm going to talk about screening mainly and staging. Okay, let's go. Mammogram. Many people would have heard about this worldwide. Mammography starts at age 50 for the larger group. I mean, for many people in many parts of the world. And a repeat will be required every one to two years, depending on the instruction from your local health authority. Some will start at age 47. But then, like I've said, it depends on what the health authority in your state, in your province, in your country will want you to do. If there's a high risk factor, like first degree relative, you'll be invited earlier than the general population in your territory. I mean, if anybody in your family comes down with breast cancer, like your mom, your aunt, your sister, regardless of where you are, anywhere in the world, you'll be invited for screening earlier than what will be required for the general populace in that locality or country or province. So, anywhere you are in the world, once you are 50, then seek out the possibility of having yourself screened if you have never been invited maybe you invite them is that funny a bit what are the screening tools that could be mammogram like i've said the time you start and how frequent you go about it could be breast ultrasound some will use magnetic resonance imaging. Biopsy could be done if it is highly suspicious. Breast examination is the cheapest that you could do by yourself and detailed instructions on that could be given at the clinic that you'll be attending. Find into aspiration and cytology if anything is picked, they want to be sure what is going on there. Genetic screening. I will go over this in details later on, and so on. Now, genetic screening. If you approach your doctor and it goes over your risk factors, you may be sent to centers that will screen you for the genes. BRCA1 and BRCA2 if the following are present. You can be referred to Breast Cancer Screening Center for BRCA1 or BRCA2 if you've had breast cancer before age 50 or if you have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer at any age. Let me repeat. If you have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer at any age or you've been diagnosed with brain cancer before age 50, your doctor may send you a further investigation as far as genetic screening is concerned for BRCA1 and BRCA2. If your mother, sister, or daughter have been diagnosed with brain cancer or ovarian cancer, or they've been diagnosed with both, you can be uh, sent to the screening center to have genetic screening done. If anyone like your maternal or paternal grandmother or aunt have been diagnosed in the past with breast cancer or ovarian cancer, it will be to your advantage to know whether you carry these genes. If you are a Jew of Ashkenazi lineage or ancestry, of course, you'll be sent to that center. 
any man ever been diagnosed with breast cancer in your family? If your response is yes, then you have qualified to have genetic breast cancer screening done. If the result is negative, then the chances of having breast cancer is the same as that of general population. So I am not going to give you the false impression that if genetic screening comes out to be negative, then you are free. No. If that is the case, if it is negative, then you look out for other risk factors. Then you are just like other women along the streets. You are like anybody in the general population. But you must guide against all other risk factors. Further detail about genetic testing and subsequent action or actions is beyond the scope of this presentation. We have what we call TNM staging. And what is all this all about? Because when you are subjected to all these investigations and they tell you at what stage are you or you just had over the radio or on TV or you read, then you need to know what this is all about. T stands for the size of the tumor. N stands for lymph node involvement. And M is all about metastasis, which means it has spread beyond the breast, far away from the breast. How do we get about this stage? Physical examination, the mammogram, breast ultrasound, and biopsy. With that, we'll be able to make this stage. If tumor size is marked TX, it means it cannot be assessed. If it is marked TO, it means no tumor is present, and that's good news. If it is marked TIS, it means there's carcinoma in situ, which could be TIS, DCIS, doctor carcinoma in situ, or TIS pagus. That is pagus disease of the nipple, not with the invasive carcinoma. If it is marked as T1, which means the tumor is less than 20 millimeter in diameter, but being less than 20 millimeter in diameter could be less than one millimeter, or T1A greater than one millimeter but less than five, or T1B greater than five, less than 10, T1C greater than 10, less than 20, or T2, T2 means the tumor is greater than 20 millimeters but less than 50. And it could be T3 where the tumor is greater than 50 millimeters in diameter. It could be T4, which means the tumor is of any size with direct extension to the chest wall or to the skin. If it is T4, it means the chest wall, but without pectoralis muscle involvement. While T4B, we have ulceration plus isolateral nose and edema, swelling along the same side of the breast cancer. T4C means both T4A and T4B are present, which means it is affecting the chest wall not affecting the muscle and it is ulcerating and there are lymph nodes involvement along the same side. Why T4D means the cancer is inflammatory. CN means clinical assessment of lymph nodes. When clinical assessment says CNS, it means it's not Cells, they couldn't assess it. When they write CN node, it means no lymph node is involved. Great news, good news.
You are happy, right? Yes, you should be. CN1 means metastasis to the same side, okay, and axillary lymph nodes. Two of them are involved. And micrometastasis, matted lymph nodes, the same side, no internal mammillary if it is CN2B, TDA, the lymph nodes above the clavicle are involved on the same side, or T. C, 3C, which means above the clavicle and below the clavicle all are involved. Pathological. Pathological classification of lymph nodes. If it is NS, it means regional lymph nodes can be assessed, or NO means no regional lymph nodes, great news. If it is NO1 plus, it means malignant cells in regional lymph nodes in one region. Um, if it is mole plus, it means positive molecular findings, but no lymph nodes. MI means micrometastasis. Some will be bored with all these um details but it's good when they give you your laboratory report and you go over this presentation and you match it and this is good for nurses and medical students for staging and they could easily you know go over this on their cell phone so you can just pause and then look at all these different classifications like PN1A micrometastasis to one or three axillary lymph nodes. Or 1B when there's micrometastasis to its bilateral internal mammary. Or 1C when 1A and 1B are combined. That is micrometastasis on the its bilateral internal mammary and up to three axillary lymph nodes and 2A and 4 to 9 axillary lymph nodes. So the doctor will actually count, the pathologist will actually count the number of lymph nodes involved. And then if it's up to 10, that is 3A, and if 1A or 2A in the presence of CN2B is present, then that's 3B. If it's affecting supraclavicular lymph nodes, then you are in 3C. MO means no distant metastasis. That is good news to the affected individual. MY means there's distant metastasis, and that is bad. Now, briefly, when there's distant metastasis, to where? Of course, to lungs, because very close neighbors, to liver, to the brain, and to the bones. Okay, stage eight, zero to four, using TNM. So stage zero is TISNOMO, which means tumor institute. No lymph node involvement, no metastasis. 1A is T1 NOMO, and 1B is T1 N1MO, while stage 2A and 2B will give you T2 or T3 NOMO, T1 N1, no metastasis in any way. And up to stage 4, where you are going to have metastasis. The staging is important because the treatment will be tailored along that. So in breast cancer, the staging is essential because that will determine what to tell the patient as per prognosis, that will determine your planning as per the treatment, 
And of course, what will follow after? And the expected possible complications. Because you're not going to treat stage 0 or 1A the same way as we're going to treat stage 4. So I will not jump to that right now because we are going to have presentation on that in details. We are going to treat each stages based on the standard treatment for each stage. How do we make the diagnosis of breast cancer? The first and the less expensive, in fact, costs nothing, is physical examination. We call it BSC, breast self-examination. You can do that by yourself. They will teach you. There will be a lot of demo on that if you visit your doctor at the clinic and your spouse can help out. Breast cancer is mostly at the upper outer quadrant. If you mark your breast into four, the upper one and that is outside, that is the region that is mostly found. That is not to say you are not going to find it in other quadrants, but mostly at the upper and outer quadrant. Breast cancer most times will be solitary, and when it is not a benign condition, when it is turning towards malignancy, it's going to be hard. Irregular, possible skin changes, nipple retraction, could adhere to the muscle on the line that is pectorally muscle. There's possibility of nipple discharge, and when it has involved the lymph nodes, there will be lymphadenopathy. After this uh, self-examination, there's possibility of going for diagnostic mammography. And ultrasound could be used, magnetic resonance imaging could be used, fine needle aspiration for cytology, excisional biopsy, and ultrasound guided core needle biopsy to make definitive diagnosis. Still on diagnosis, you could tap for cytology if it is cystic. If metastasis is suspected, then you're going to do something different. And what could that be? You can do bone scan because it could metastasize the bone, abdominal ultrasound to check what is happening to the liver, chest x-ray to go over what is happening to the lungs. Remember, I've just listed those organs just a few minutes ago. And CT chest and abdominal pelvic CT to just to rule out what is happening to all other organs in that region. And I mentioned earlier that breast metastasis could go to the brain, so you do CT scan of the head. Okay, in conclusion for now, the next presentation will be on differential diagnosis because it's not the time that you find a lump that it is scary. If it is not breast carcinoma, what can it be? Then what would the treatment be based on the different stages? And how do we follow up? Thank you for listening. Kindly watch out for the next presentation on differential diagnosis, treatment, and follow up in the next few hours. Thanks. Bye.